knives are one of our oldest tools that we've actually manufactured. In fact, uh, evidence suggests that Homo sapiens were not the first hominids to manufacture knives. We humans came about in great part because of our diet and the knife was absolutely central to our ability to go out and get the kind of food that provided the nutritional value we needed for our brains to grow, to be what they are today, for us to have language, for us to have social time, for us to have cars and iPhones and all this sort of stuff came from that brain growth. And that evidence indicates stemmed from our ability to get large quantities of meat. We don't have the teeth or the nails to get that on our own. Uh, you know, you imagine a hominid 1.7 million years ago coming across a deer. Uh, they can't pull that apart, as grotesque as that may sound. They can't do that physically. They don't have the teeth or the nails or the strength to do that. And so a knife allowed them to do that, allowed them to take that zebra leg off that the lions had left laying around and take that back to the the tribe and then they could eat on that and it would give them extra time to sit around and be leisurely and so you know kind of fast forwarding through time the materials changed but the importance of that as a tool just as a very basic tool has not I don't always consider myself a, a particularly spiritual person. The quenching of a blade, essentially taking soft malleable iron and turning it into a hardened steel, was viewed by more than a few cultures as kind of the, 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 the place where the soul of the knife is created or the soul of that sword is created because without that heat treatment, it's just a, it's a malleable piece of iron. It's, it's, it's kind of bendable and it can never really be sharp and it can't really do any, it can't bear any uh, loads or anything like that. But once you quench it, once you take it up to uh, the, the, that critical temperature and you plunge that into a brine or an oil or a water or whatever and it, and it hardens, then it really becomes a blade, a blade that can be used, a blade that can be honed uh, into a usable tool. What's become my mission is uh, to help people understand that yet yeah, this is one tool, but this is one of many and that we come can potentially come across in our lives that should last us, that we should be able to, to get this one good knife and use it for our life and pass it down to if, if you're you know if you have children or, or nieces and nephews or you know they should inherit that one day and if it's well taken care of then your grandchildren should have that knife one day. I have knives from my, my grandfather's um, that, that to this day I keep sharp and I keep oiled and, and they're great, they're perfectly usable knives. And there's absolutely no reason that we should continue to buy products that are meant to be purchased and then simply thrown away when there's an alternative that can outlast us. Buy a good knife you know, and invest in, in, in one that will bring joy back into the preparation of food. It, it, you'll be happy to get in the kitchen and use that knife to prepare food for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, for your friends. And then one day someone else will pick that knife up who has seen you use it. And all of the memories of watching you use that knife will flood in and, and, and it will mean something to them beyond it just being Again, something with plastic handles that came out of a blister pack that's just gonna get thrown away one day. Indy's Table is sponsored by Delco Foods, a local family-owned distributor for over 60 years. Delco Foods is a proud supporter of Indy's independent restaurants.